Hey everybody, Matt Bell with Electric Violin Shop, and we're back with the From Classical to Radical series. This week we're going to be talking about how to go electric. There's a couple different ways to get yourself in the electric violin situation. Two of those methods involve using the instruments you already have, and two of those methods involve using a purpose-built instrument. So to go electric, there are really a few options. Many of you have probably experimented with the simplest way, which is to stick a microphone in front of the violin. And maybe that's why you're here, because you sort of found the limitations with that. In the studio, miking the violin is really the best way to get an amazing sound. But in a studio, you're in a sound isolated environment and you're working with ultra high end microphones. In a gigging world, how often are you in an isolated environment and working with a $4,000 microphone? Right, never. That never happens. So what happens is all these high end condenser mics, they hear everything that's happening within like a 20 foot radius. If you move around a little bit, it's no big deal. But it's got to be silent in a room because it can pick up people coughing 15 feet away. And it's got to be a good sounding room because if you're in sort of a concrete thing and it doesn't really have the best sound, the microphone is going to hear all that. Assuming you wouldn't mind spending $4,000 on a microphone, if you put it on stage, it's going to pick up more drums and guitar and crowd noise and shuffling your feet. It's going to pick up more of that than it does the violin and it sort of defeats the whole purpose of micing your instrument. So we could always put a less sensitive microphone on a stand and just stick it in front of the violin. And a lot of you have probably done that. But it becomes so important at that point that you not move. With a dynamic microphone, every time you move a couple inches away from the element, you're cutting your sound in half. So that's a nightmare for the sound guy, it's a nightmare for you. And even a near field mic is gonna get a lot of bleed which means that it's, it's hearing all the other things on the stage, so it's not a clean violin signal. You end up with violin mixed with drums, or violin mixed with guitar, or violin mixed with crowd noise. And if it's loud up there and you need a monitor, you're headed toward Feedback City. While there are environments where miking your violin is the right thing to do, in a live setting, most stages are really not set up for that. So the next step is to put a pickup on your existing violin. There's some real positives here. You can go with a, a slip in, a clip on, a strap on, a place under the bridge, and maintain everything that you have with the same instrument that you've been playing for years. It's really hard to put a value on that intimate relationship that you have with your instrument. I mean, we all know what it's like to have an instrument that you're really comfortable with. You can even change out the bridge like I've done on my violin. This bridge has a, has a pickup element embedded in it. You can see it here. And then it's got a jack on the side of the violin where you can see where the, uh, where the cable plugs in. In an extremely low volume setting where you don't want to use any effects, this, this works great. However, this wooden body has been developed over hundreds of years to do one thing. And that is to amplify the sound that is made by these strings and project it to the world. So if it hears a sound, this violin body attempts to mechanically amplify that sound and project it. So what happens if I plug this into an amp and I turn the amp up so that I can hear it? The violin starts to hear the amp in addition to the strings. It tries to amplify that sound and project it, which makes the amp louder, which gives more sound to the violin, which it tries to amplify and send out. And we end up with this loop and that's what's called feedback because it feeds through the loop and you'll hear it just take off until everybody sort of dives for cover. Additionally, away from traditional classical music settings, violins are in great physical peril. People do not understand that you're holding fifteen or twenty thousand dollars in your hand on that stage. Heaven forbid a bar fight break out or a beer get spilled or somebody trip and fall onto your stage and land on your violin. Maybe you want to have a little bit less capital at risk when you're in a room where everybody's drinking alcohol. So we could go with an acoustic violin that is designed to resonate less. You can buy a purpose-built acoustic electric violin that has all the electronics built in and selected to pair well with the instrument. They're somewhat less prone to feedback and they have a sleeker look. They don't have the, the jack on top of the body. 
but they still generate some sound on their own. So if you want to use some effects, especially distortion, you end up hearing the crowd hears your violin because it does project and they hear the sound that's coming out of the speaker blended together and that may not be what you want. And in a high volume setting, they still feedback. They're more, more resistant to feedback, but they are not immune to it. So that's why they developed the solid body violin. They make virtually no sound by themselves and they are incredibly resistant to feedback. You can turn them up as high as you want and they're still not gonna feedback. Of course, you lose the resonant body of the instrument. You lose that woody, hollow sound of a acoustic, well-crafted acoustic violin. But there's a few things that we can do to get that back. We can talk about reverb, EQ, impulse responses, we're not going to get deep into that now, but just know that there are a couple of tricks at your disposal to get some of that resonance back when you're using solid body electric violin. Of course, it is all a little silly, right? Nobody looks at an electric guitar and wonders why it doesn't sound like an acoustic guitar. It's understood that they're two different instruments with two different purposes. If you want to sound like ACDC, you pick up a Les Paul and plug it into a Marshall. You want to sound like James Taylor, you pick up an acoustic guitar. Jean-Luc Ponty was one of the early pioneers of electric violin and jazz, and he simply embraced the fact that an electric violin is different from an acoustic violin, and he just went with it. It doesn't sound acoustic because it's not an acoustic. It sounds like an electric because it is an electric, and we're good with that. Two very different instruments, different applications. If we decide to go with a solid body electric violin, there are a lot of different kinds. They all sound different, they feel different, they play different. The first thing that we always ask when somebody calls the electric violin shop asking for advice on how to pick out an electric violin is, what is your budget? There are cheap Chinese made violin shaped objects on the internet for about $100. But in our experience, you're going to have to spend a bit more to get something that's worth playing. Starting right around $600, there are several options and then they go up into the $5,000 plus range. One thing to think about is that five string instruments are sort of becoming the standard in electric violins. We sell more five string violins than we do four strings. That low C really does add so much useful range to the instrument. And once you remove the need for a resonant body, it's much easier to get power on the low end without sacrificing clarity and responsiveness on the high end. That was an issue back when we were only working with acoustic instruments. It was really hard to get a five or six string violin and they tried it was really hard to get one to sound right because you couldn't get the power that you needed on the bottom end and the clarity and responsiveness you need on the high end. Now that we don't rely on the body of the violin to project the sound, we rely on amplifiers, we can go to four, five, six, seven string violins because all the signal is coming to you from the bridge of the violin. You just keep going down in fifths. So how low do you need to go? The low B flat on a seven string violin is a whole step lower than the bottom note on a four string cello. There are some semi hollow body electric violins that give a bit of that body resonance with a ton of feedback resistance. There are active violins, there are passive violins. Uh, remember when we talked about active DIs and passive DIs, whether there's a battery involved in the circuit, it's the same concept. There are fretted violins, there are fretless violins, there are light violins, there are heavy violins. There's violins that play and feel very much like an acoustic. There are violins that don't feel or play anything like an acoustic violin. Um, there's painted and natural wood violins. There are uh, carbon fiber violins. There are metal violins. There are acrylic violins. There's a tons of different uh, materials of construction. There are different ways to hold the violin. There are custom shoulder rests and uh, chin rest designs. There are violins that don't have shoulder rests or chin rests. There are violins that can use your chin rest and shoulder pad. Um, there's one that straps on. There are some that have uh, balancing devices. There's just so many different options. So it may be a little intimidating, but if you remember back to picking out your acoustic violin, it takes a little time it takes a little research and we at the electric violin shop are more than happy to help you sort of sort through all the, uh, the different ways to get where you're trying to go. If you're enjoying these episodes, please click this link here to our blog where we have notes about these videos and even more information for you guys. But be sure to check out our Facebook page, Twitter page, and Instagram account. Thank you guys for tuning in and we will see you next week.